Hi everyone, um, Merry World Book Day to you all. Uh, my name is Abby and I am one of the volunteer Birmingham Lit Champions for the National Literacy Trust and I'm very excited to be talking to you all today. So what am I here to talk to you about? Well, World Book Day is of course, as the name suggests, about books. But it's not just about the books that have already been written, there's a lot about that, but it's also about how those books and the ideas in them can help inspire creativity to be able to tell more stories. And I'm a Birmingham Lit Champion specifically, so I'm especially interested in how Birmingham related books, Birmingham based books, books by Birmingham authors can help inspire creativity. So I thought perhaps we could take a look at some Birmingham related books, have a look at some of the ideas in them, maybe draw those out and see if we can use them to generate some ideas for ourselves and make some stories of our own. I thought that'd be really cool. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start big. I'm gonna start with the really, really famous one that a lot of you have probably heard of already. And that is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, who you may not have known, uh, is from Birmingham. So that's a cool claim to fame. Um, it tells the story of Bilbo Baggins, a hobbit, a, a little dude with hairy feet, uh, who is sent on a really exciting quest, when actually he'd probably rather stay at home. It's the kind of guy he is. Instead, he's sent to mysterious places like the Misty Mountains ooh, uh, and discovers treasures such as Gollum's mysterious ring. And this is all with the intention of finding a great big wonderful stash of treasure at the end, but I won't spoil the ending because it's good. Uh, so the next one you might not have heard of. Uh, this is a detective novel um, and it is by Birmingham based Catherine O'Flynn. And it tells the story of a 10 year old girl called Kate and she goes missing in a fictional West Midlands shopping centre. And her hobby had kind of been walking around with a little notebook and pretending she was a detective. And she did this with a toy monkey who she called Mickey. So then there's a kind of time skip thing. We skip forward 20 years and a lady called Lisa who works in a music store and a guy called Kurt who works as a security guard, they become friends but they start to realise that they both have connections to the case of this missing girl called Kate. And it's very, very exciting. And the final book we're going to talk about is Changing Places by David Lodge. And Changing Places is set in a fictionalised version, so kind of it's inspired by it, but some of the bits are made up. A fictionalised version of the University of Birmingham that is called rummage and the university hosts an exchange with an American university and initially the two um, academics who are involved in this exchange they don't think it's going to work they don't think they're going to get on but because they're very different but they eventually realize that it's going surprisingly well but then it starts to go a little bit too well and they get perhaps too comfortable in each other's lives and it leads to all sorts of family and marital problems, which need to be sorted out eventually. And they do that sorting out in a New York hotel room. So after all that, we are left with this. Now, I think that this is a rather good collage of ideas that you could perhaps use to inspire your own stories. So that's what I'm gonna leave you with today. I'm gonna to leave you with a challenge. Could you use some, or if you're feeling really, really brave, combine them all and come up with a creative piece of your own? Now that could be a painting, a song, a story, an interpretive dance, a, a, a very elaborate bonsai tree. I don't know, it could be absolutely anything you'd like, a cake, and we at the National Literacy Trust would absolutely love to see anything you produced. So you can get in touch, you can tag us on social media. Um, 
over to you. Good luck and happy creating, I suppose. Thank you for listening. Bye.